Hey guys, Proper English here, and today we're going to take a look at something pretty cool. Kind Potato left me a comment asking if it was possible to invert the data line on my one tick per bit serial transfer system. And as you can see, we've got an on off sequence over here, it goes down the whole way. And when we send this over to the serial decoder, we get an off on sequence, so I have successfully inverted it. Now, there is a little bit of a bug. I think it has to do with this comparator over here, but we'll talk about that in a bit. First, I want to talk about the concept that allows all of this to be possible because it's pretty cool. I'm calling it anti-burnout, and let's check this out. I've set up three different inverters over here. We've got a torch-based inverter, a piston-based inverter, and a comparator-based inverter, and we're going to see how each of these responds to one tick pulses. We'll do that using a two tick clock. We send a one tick pulse into the two tick clock. Now the clock is giving off one tick pulses and the torch doesn't do anything. That's because torches don't respond to one tick pulses. What about the piston? We start up the clock. The piston starts dropping its block. That's because pistons respond to one tick pulses by block dropping. And we're getting this little micro pulse out here, but that's certainly not the inversion that we want. But what about our comparator-based inverter? Well, the comparator-based inverter actually works, and if I freeze the frame, we can see that we're sending one-tick inversions, okay? And I'm calling this an anti-burnout inverter because this will never burn out. This actually works. And what this means is we can build anti-burnout logic gates. I've thrown a few together to take a look at. So let's check them out. We'll start by taking a look at an anti-burnout AND gate. And as you guys know, an AND gate will only be on when both inputs are on. Right now they're both off and the output is off. If I turn the top one on, the output's still off. If just the bottom one is on, the output's off. But now when they're both on, the output is on. So let's see how this works. Well, we've got our anti-burnout NOT gate down here and we've got a subtractor up here. So right now, if this top input is on, well, we're subtracting a full 15 strength using the comparator. So we've got the B input here, that's what we're subtracting from the A input, and we get a zero output. Now, if the top input is off and the bottom input is on, well, it doesn't matter that we're subtracting a low signal here because there's no A input. And so we're not going to see an output no matter what. But now, when both inputs are on, well, we've got a strong input up top, and because we've used this NOT gate, we've got a low signal over here, and now we've got an output that's on. And so that's pretty cool. I've also set up an anti-burnout NOR gate. Now, a NOR gate is only on when both inputs are off. That's what we're looking at right now. And all this is is an anti-burnout NOT gate with both the A and the B input hooked into the B input of this comparator set to subtract. If we take a look in the hopper, we've got a full 15 signal strength coming out of our NOR gate. Now, if I turn the top input on, we're subtracting a 14 from our 15. We get a one over here. The bottom input is a little bit different because we're subtracting a 12. We see an output of three. Now, both of these situations are fine because it's easy to distinguish a 1 or a 3 from a full 15. But if you want a straight on and off, all you need to do is remove some redstone from the hopper. And now the output is totally off. If we turn these inputs off, we've got an output of 12, and that's still okay. But we're getting a straight on and off. So pretty cool. I've taken this anti-burnout NOR gate and this anti-burnout AND gate, and I've built a two-wide tileable anti-burnout XNOR gate. So let's check it out. What I've done here is hooked up the AND gate and the NOR gate that I just showed you to build an anti-burnout XNOR gate. Okay, and so this thing is pretty cool. And XNOR is only on when both inputs are the same. So right now they're both off. The output is on. If I turn the top input on, the output turns off. We're actually getting a low signal, but that is perfectly fine. If we turn the bottom input on, the output is off. And now when both inputs are on, the output is on. And so as I mentioned before, this is simply an AND gate and a NOR gate functioning together because an AND gate is only on when both inputs are on. The NOR gate is only on when both inputs are off. So we can combine them 
to build an XNOR. So what's really cool about this is I can turn on this clock over here and you can see that the gate functions perfectly fine and that is really cool. This opens up something that is really interesting because if we can sync everything up so that the different parts of the gate are functioning at the same time, it means we can send data through this really quickly. The thing is, at the moment, comparators are a little strange when it comes to their delay and so we're going to take a look at an XOR gate that's perfectly synced up and we'll see how well it works. I've set up an XOR gate within this testing system that will send different inputs with one tick delay in between each. That'll test how responsive the XOR gate is. Now I've built an anti-burnout XOR gate that's too wide tileable, but we're not going to look at that one because I'm not sure that it's perfectly synced up. This one definitely is. So an XOR gate should only be on when one input is on. We can test that here. We've got this guy on, output's on, this guy on, the output's on. And now when they're both on, the output turns off. So this XOR gate works perfectly fine. Let's see what happens when we send our different inputs. And this could take a few tries. I'm going to freeze the frame so we get a good picture of what's going on on the delay line. And this one looks good. We're seeing 1001. That's exactly what it should be. I set the inputs so that they should produce a 1001. Let's try this a few more times and we'll see how it changes. All right, so this is another situation. We're seeing a 101. That's no good because that's not what we're expecting. This is probably due to some of the strange delay issues with the comparators. I've seen one other situation, so I'm going to see if I can capture it and we'll take a look at that one too. This is the other situation I've observed. We're seeing a 10001 as our output, and that's incorrect. So Clearly there are still some issues with delay and comparators, but hopefully those issues get resolved because I think it would be fantastic to be able to send fast inputs into anti-burnout logic gates and have them produce consistent results. This brings us back to the bug that I mentioned with putting an anti-burnout NOT gate on the data line for my one tick per bit serial transmitter. So let's jump back and take a look at what's going on. The issue that I was having is if this anti-burnout inverter is always functioning, when this first bit over here is off, we get a strange transfer result. So what should happen is this bit over here, since it's on, should get inverted as it's transferred and end up off in that last position in the decoder. But let's see what happens. When I start it up, we end up with that bit and only that bit not being inverted. And that's kind of funky. And this is dependent on the state of this first bit over here. So if I clear out everything else, can just break some lines over here, toss them back. Now we've only got this first bit on. We can do the transfer again, and it's going to work perfectly. And there we go. And this is really strange. I've set up a system to counteract that, but as I did more tests, I ran into more issues. So I'm not going to worry about it, and hopefully it'll get resolved in the future. This anti-burnout concept is really interesting. I think it's got a lot of potential. Hopefully I've shown you that today. I'm certainly going to be playing with it in the future, and I'm really looking forward to comparators becoming a bit more consistent because this is going to be a lot of fun. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you guys next time.